Shocker. John here guys and today we're talking about the shocker the new five inch ultra light now wasn't the shocker in spider-man with the andrew garfield kid no that was actually electro this is the shocker you can't escape me it's also kind of one of those not safe for work kind of things but we're not going to get into that uh, prototypes designed by catalyst machine which you can actually go pre-order these right now they will be coming out very soon so how this came about was the guys over at catalyst machine works we're kind of asking the community what should we work on next what should be our next design what are some ideas people have and i was testing the dave c five inch mini long range prototype at that time and i was kind of like uh, what if we saw a Catalyst Ultralight that you could use for some light freestyle or some long range? And I really, really had so much fun with that formula, but I wanted something with a slightly different arm design and with a little bit more durability. I wanted something that could long range or freestyle. And so he does sort of his own spin on that Dave C uh, micro long range formula. But make no mistake, this is beefy enough to be able to freestyle it. And that's exactly what I wanted. He also has sort of a different arm shape layout. And that really, really gives you some more of that flight feel from your traditional um, freestyle instead of just cruising. But because it is sort of a dead cat, you can still get that cruising. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> you can see from the top, it's sort of at first glance looks kind of like a mini Bangod. But the other thing that it has is it has your arms on the top plane, which really gives you an awesome um, sort of center of gravity, all like in the center of that prop line. Oh man, because your battery sits at the same level as your arms. You have an underslung build, so your flight controller, ESC stack, and your Cadex Vista, if you're using the DJI system, all actually mount hanging instead of resting. They hang from the top plate instead of resting on the bottom plate. And on the bottom, you have this cage that runs across. That's kind of reminiscent to Umagod's uh, remix design. Uh, so if you actually remove these two bolts right here, the whole thing just pops off so you can service your entire quad by only removing two or three screws. That's such an awesome uh, way to do this. People have been adding these third plates, like a mid plate, uh, in order to get sandwich on the arms. Now sandwich on the arms, we discovered a couple years ago, is kind of the secret to having no arm wiggle. It's just like a U. And so that sandwiches the arms in place, but doesn't add a lot of weight and it kind of gives this thing sort of a winged look like it has like almost like a flying squirrel or something like that that's pretty cool uh the shocker is shockingly good i just can't believe how much fun this thing is you know flying uh some of these ultra lights is so fun you can do all the freestyle but it just doesn't have that instant punch rush that just scoots you to the moon like a traditional five inch wheel well, I think I kind of found the secret to, the, to that. These Brother Hobby 2004 motors that I reviewed recently on a racing pod racer build, they're 3150 KV on 4S. That is a magic component to this by giving you these motors on these five inch Japan 5125 props. I'll have links for all that stuff in the description below if you wanna put your own together. That is a magical combination that really gives you that instant surge of power to just fly over the tree lines uh, at any moment that you want to. So you have an ultralight formula, but you don't sacrifice that freestyle ability. The other thing about these ultralights is sometimes if you get too light on five inch, they just blow around and wobble. Some people commented on my mini long range that there was a little bit of wobbles in there. 
Now, part of that was how light it was in the wind. Part of it was those 1805 motors are a little bit harder to tune once you get the weight higher. I didn't notice any issues with them on a five inch pod racer, but on those other 1805 motors, when I got the weight closer to 200 grams, it did have slightly a little bit of wobbles. This does not seem to have it on this motor combination. Now rounding out the build, I'm using the Cadex Vista. I'm using the J Hemku. Uh, 35 amp 20 by 20 single board so you can definitely fit a two layer stack in there but I'm using the single layer and it's holding up completely fine uh, it reduces the weight a little bit and because I had so much extra room in here I actually put the capacitor for the build directly in there um, this cage just works so great you can actually take off very easy from grass because you have this sort of bottom fuselage that sits like this and your props are raised so I did like that it just gave me everything that I was hoping for those that five inch mini long range I haven't had so much fun flying around in something like that in a while and this gets the same flight time 11 minutes on a off the shelf 1050 milliamp 4s tattoo pack that's like a 16 or 17 dollar battery so cheap uh, and you can fly if you're cruising for 11 minutes. Now, if you start pushing that freestyle, you know, you're going to be more like seven to eight minutes or something like that. But it's just incredible um, the way you can get that. The other cool thing is there's so many accessories. Of course, the brace is going to come with this. I'm going to show you right here the four inch configuration of this because they do have a four inch. Now, the four inch. I'm gonna take off the brace so you can really get a good look at that front cage and just see how much camera protection you have on there. Check out the interesting way that you get a unique angle of that front camera cage in relation to the prop line so that you to get your 30 degree tilt, you're really kind of flying like this. It's, it's just a great feeling to get that super punch out. Uh, response. I really like how they've integrated some camera protection and feel into that. And then of course you have the optional rear brace. Now because of this is in addition to the arm um, layout is probably what's generating such a smooth flight design. The accessories for this thing are here. There's a plethora of them. Hey, what? A plethora? Um, you have your GPS mounts for the front, GPS for the rear. This configuration that I have at the back right here is actually two pieces. There's a center piece that ends up being this Vista mount uh, and it has a little zip tie to keep it in there. That really gives you a nice antenna placement. I was flying not long range, but longer than I normally fly. And I was getting like no bars dropping on my DJI system. And it's probably because I usually have bad antenna placement. But when you get a build like this and you get these accessories, you're always gonna have a good antenna placement. You can see flying level, your antenna is always gonna be up. Even when you're flying back towards yourself, your battery's gonna be up here at the front. So you're always gonna have a clear connection to that antenna. Then on the outside that fits onto this little standoff right here is your Crossfire Immortal T holder. Now, this is the setup I'm running, but there's also an equivalent to this that has a GPS holder built in. And of course, you could also put your GPS holder at the front. Just so many options of how you wanna build this thing. Golly, so much protection, so much lightweight. Speaking of lightweight, this thing with the strap, with props, with everything, comes right in at about 203 grams. So very, very lightweight. If I use the onboard DJI antenna, receiver setup and uh, a couple of other things i could easily get this another 10 to 15 grams lighter um, so that is an option but i mean this weight with this motor combination is just perfection i just was having so much fun now if you really just want to have super freestyle feel an 850 milliamp 4s pack will work Perfectly. I really like the tattoo ones and the pulse ones are my two favorite of that size. The cage design is so satisfying to open and close. The flight feel that you get, the ultralight. So a lot of people, me included, think that the DJI system is very usable footage. If I'm not going to sell something, if I'm not making a film or something like that, 
um, I don't necessarily always need a GoPro. Now I'm pretty confident that this has the power that I could carry my GoPro Hero 9 if I wanted to, so I may uh, get a mount for that in the future, make a follow-up video to see how it does with that on board. But here's the thing, guys. With a battery, this comes out less than half the weight of my current freestyle build with a battery. I'm talking about 650 grams versus less than 300 grams, less than half the weight. So when people are saying, you know, what's this for? What's this for? That's what it's for. The amount of noise this thing produces is like almost like a tiny whoop. It's like a diatone two and a half inch toothpick. It's so quiet. You could fly at a park and unless you're doing massive punch outs, no one would ever hear you. I just can't believe that this is possible today. So if you want to be able to park fly more places, if they're not a lot of wide open spaces where you live and you can't be attracting the type of attention that a heavy five inch attracts, this is the solution. Also, the stack components are cheaper. The motors are cheaper. <laughs> the frame is cheaper. Everything about this becomes less expensive than your traditional five inch, but you don't sacrifice any sacrifices in power if you're not using that action camera. And for me guys, even though I have the GoPro Hero 9, I usually only get GoPro footage maybe 15 or 20% of the time. The rest of the time, I just wanna go have a fun flight. And with DJI footage, you end up getting some very usable footage at the end. So what do you think guys in the comments? If you want one of these things, go pre-order. You can get the bind and fly version. I did take some care in this build, but of course Catalyst has the best builders in the business. So if you want one that's even cleaner than this, go check them out for that. Uh, what do you think in the comments guys? Um, a lot of the bind and fly manufacturers are getting in on this trend, but I think this is catapulting that trend. Four inch is very cool. If you get some very underpowered motors, you can fly on one of those lie lie on batteries for like 30 minutes, but you don't have the power to freestyle. This combination lets you do both. So I think very quickly, we're gonna see the community move on from that four inch size to this type of five inch size, retain the same type of flight time, but actually have a dual purpose, long range cruiser, um, slash freestyle quad. But after a while of cruising, you wanna do some power loops, you wanna do some split S's, you wanna do some aerial acrobatic maneuvers. And if you try on one of those ultralights, you can kinda of beat it, you know, hard enough to be able to do some of those moves. Or you can just build in a way to do both. Thanks guys.